John and Mary sat on the couch, the soft glow of the television casting shadows across the room. What a day, sighed Mary, leaning her head on John's shoulder. I know, he replied, wrapping his arm around her, but at least we can relax now. Ah, they sat in comfortable silence for a moment, the only sound the gentle hum of the TV. I am, oh, the union. Suddenly, a loud crash came from the kitchen. What was that? Mary exclaimed, sitting up straight. John frowned. I'll go check it out. He stood and made his way to the kitchen, Mary close behind him. In the corner, a small, strange-looking creature cowered, its large eyes darting around the room. What is that? Mary whispered, her voice trembling. I don't know, John replied, taking a cautious step forward, but it looks scared. The creature let out a soft whimper, and John felt a pang of sympathy. Hey, it's okay, he said gently, holding out his hand. We're not going to hurt you. The creature hesitated, then slowly approached John, its tiny hand reaching out to touch his. Mary watched her heart racing, as the creature seemed to calm in John's presence. I think it's an alien, she breathed, her eyes wide with wonder. John nodded, a small smile playing on his lips. Well, we can't just leave it here, can we? Mary's eyes widened even further. I, you mean, I think we should take it in, John said, his voice firm at least until we figure out what to do. The alien child looked up at them, its large eyes filled with a silent plea. John gently guided the alien child into their living room, Mary following close behind. There, that's better, John said, his voice soft and soothing. You're safe now. The alien child looked around the room, its large eyes taking in every detail. What do we do? Mary whispered, her brow furrowed with concern. I'm not sure, John admitted, running a hand through his hair. But we can't just leave it here. The alien child let out a soft chirp, and John couldn't help but smile. It seems friendly enough, he said, kneeling down to get a closer look. Mary watched as the child reached out a tiny hand, tentatively touching John's face. I think it likes you she said, a hint of wonder in her voice. John chuckled. Well, I like it too. The child let out another chirp, and John couldn't help but feel a surge of protectiveness. We have to help it, Mary, he said, his voice firm. We can't just turn it away. Mary nodded, her eyes filled with determination. You're right. We have to do something. The child looked up at them, its large eyes filled with a silent plea. Don't worry, John said, reaching out to gently stroke the child's head. We're going to take care of you. Mary moved closer, her hand reaching out to join John's. That's right, you're safe with us. The child seemed to relax, its tiny body leaning into their touch. John and Mary exchanged a meaningful glance, their hearts filled with a newfound purpose. John and Mary sat on the couch, the alien child nestled between them. What are we going to do? Mary asked, her brow furrowed with concern. John sighed, running a hand through his hair. And I'm not sure. We can't just leave it here. The child let out a soft chirp, and Mary couldn't help but smile. It seems so helpless, she said, gently stroking the child's head. I know, John replied, his voice filled with empathy. We have to help it. But how? Mary asked, her eyes searching John's face. We don't even know where it came from. We'll figure it out, John said, his voice firm. We can't just turn it away. 
The child looked up at them, its large eyes filled with a silent plea. Please, John. I think we should take it in, Mary said, her voice barely above a whisper. John nodded, a small smile playing on his lips. I was thinking the same thing. Really? Ah, Mary asked, her eyes widening with surprise. Yeah, John said, reaching out to gently touch the child's hand. We can't just leave it out there all alone. The child seemed to sense their decision, its body relaxing into their touch. Okay, Mary said, a determined look on her face. Then, that's what we'll do. John nodded, his own expression mirroring Mary's. We'll take care of it, no matter what. The child let out a soft chirp, and John and Mary knew they had made the right choice. John and Mary sat on the couch, the alien child nestled between them. So, what do we do now? Mary asked, her eyes filled with uncertainty. John shook his head, a frown on his face. I'm not sure. We've never dealt with anything like this before. The child let out a soft chirp, and Mary couldn't help but smile. It's so cute, she said, gently stroking its head. Suddenly, the child's eyes began to glow, and a strange energy seemed to emanate from its body. What the... John exclaimed, his eyes widening in surprise. Mary gasped, her hand flying to her mouth. John, what's happening? The child let out a high-pitched trill, and the air around them seemed to crackle with electricity. I don't know, John said, his voice trembling, but I think we're about to find out. Suddenly, the child's body began to levitate, its tiny limbs outstretched. John, do something, Mary cried, her voice filled with panic. John reached out, his hands trembling, but the child seemed to be beyond his reach. I don't know what to do. He admitted, his voice barely above a whisper. The child let out another trill, and the room began to shake as if the very foundations of the house were being tested. We have to stop it! Mary shouted, her eyes filled with fear. John shook his head, his mind racing. I don't know how. This is beyond anything I've ever seen. The child's eyes glowed brighter, and John and Mary braced themselves for what was to come. John and Mary watched in awe as the alien child floated effortlessly above the living room floor. This is incredible, John whispered, his eyes wide with wonder. I know, Mary replied, her voice trembling. But it's also terrifying. The child let out a series of soft chirps, its tiny hands reaching out towards them. What do you think it wants? John asked, his brow furrowed with concern. I don't know, Mary admitted, her gaze fixed on the child, but I'm worried. And suddenly the child's eyes began to glow, and a strange energy crackled in the air around them. John, what's happening? Mary cried, her voice filled with panic. I don't know, John replied, his own voice shaking, but we need to get out of here. The child let out a high-pitched trill, and the room began to shake, as if the very foundations of the house were being tested. We can't just leave it, Mary said, her eyes filled with determination. Mary, we don't have a choice, John said, his voice firm. We need to get to safety. Ah. The child's eyes glowed brighter, and the air around them crackled with energy. John, I'm scared. Mary whispered, her hand reaching out to grasp his. Me too, John admitted, his grip tightening around her hand. But we have to try to help it. The child let out another trill, and the room began to tremble, the walls shaking as if they might collapse at any moment. We need to get out of here, John said, his voice filled with urgency. Now, Mary nodded, her eyes filled with fear and uncertainty. Okay, but what about the child? John hesitated, 
his gaze shifting between Mary and the child. I don't know, but we can't stay here. The child's energy continued to build, and John and Mary knew they had to make a decision, and fast. John and Mary sat on the couch, their eyes fixed on the alien child as it hovered in the center of the room. What are we going to do? Mary asked, her voice barely above a whisper. John shook his head, his brow furrowed with concern. I don't know. This is all so overwhelming. The child let out a soft chirp its large eyes seeming to plead with them. I mean, we can't just keep it here, Mary said, her gaze shifting to John. It's not safe. I know, John replied, running a hand through his hair. But we can't just abandon it either. What if it's dangerous? Mary asked, her voice trembling. What if it hurts us? I don't think it means to, John said his voice gentle. It seems scared, just like we are. The child let out another chirp, and John couldn't help but feel a pang of sympathy. We have to at least try to help it, he said, his voice firm. We can't just turn our backs on it. Mary nodded, her eyes filled with uncertainty. I know. But what if we're in over our heads? Then we'll figure it out, John said reaching out to take her hand. Together. The child floated closer, its tiny hands reaching out towards them. I just... I'm worried, Mary said, her voice trembling. What if we're making a mistake? John squeezed her hand, his gaze steady. We'll never know unless we try. The child let out a soft trill, and John and Mary couldn't help but wonder if they had made the right decision. I guess we're in this for the long haul, Mary said, her voice tinged with uncertainty. I guess so, John replied, his own voice betraying his doubts. The child continued to hover, its large eyes fixed on them, and John and Mary knew they had to make a choice. John and Mary walked down the familiar streets of their small town, the sun shining brightly overhead. With two trees, it's such a beautiful day. Mary said, a smile on her face. It is, John agreed, his arm around her shoulders. It's nice to have a little normalcy after everything that's happened. They passed by the local diner, the smell of freshly brewed coffee wafting through the air. I could go for a cup of coffee, John said, his gaze lingering on the diner. Me too, Mary replied, her steps quickening slightly. As they approached the diner, John couldn't help but notice a group of men in suits standing outside, their eyes scanning the area. That's odd, he murmured, his brow furrowing. What is? Mary asked, following his gaze. Those men, John said, his voice low. They don't look like they belong here. Mary's eyes widened as she took in the sight of the men. You don't think they're... I don't know. John replied, his grip on her tightening. But I have a bad feeling about this. They quickened their pace, their eyes darting around the street, searching for any sign of the alien child. Do you think they know about it? Mary whispered, her voice trembling. I don't know, John said, his jaw clenched. But we can't take any chances. They hurried home their hearts racing, the image of the men in suits burned into their minds. What are we going to do? Mary asked, her voice filled with worry. I don't know, John admitted, his own expression mirroring her concern. But we have to protect the child, no matter what. The child looked up at them, its large eyes filled with a silent plea, and John and Mary knew they had to act quickly. John and Mary paced the living room, their faces etched with worry. What are we going to do? Mary asked, her voice trembling. I don't know, John replied, running a hand through his hair. But we can't let them take the child. The alien child watched them, its large eyes filled with a silent plea. 
We have to protect it, Mary said, her gaze fixed on the child. But how? John asked. His brow furrowed with concern. Those men looked like they meant business. We'll have to hide it, Mary said, her voice firm. We can't let them find it. Where? Where? John asked, his eyes scanning the room. This place isn't exactly secure. We'll have to take it somewhere else, Mary said, her mind racing. Somewhere? They'll never think to look. To like where? John asked, his voice tinged with desperation. I don't know, Mary admitted, her shoulders slumping. But we have to try. The child let out a soft shirt, and John and Mary couldn't help but feel a surge of protectiveness. We'll figure it out, John said, his voice filled with determination. We have to. Mary nodded, her eyes filled with resolve. Okay, let's start planning. They moved closer to the child, their heads bent together as they discussed their options. We'll need to move quickly, John said, his voice low. Those agents could be back at any moment. I know, Mary replied, her gaze shifting to the child. But we have to keep it safe. The child seemed to sense their urgency, its body tensing as if it knew what was at stake. We'll do whatever it takes, John said, his hand reaching out to gently touch the child's head. Mary nodded, her own hand joining his. Yes, we will. No matter what, John and Mary moved quickly, gathering supplies and making preparations. Do you think this will work? Mary asked, her voice laced with uncertainty. It has to, John replied, his jaw set with determination. We can't let them take the child. The alien child watched them, its large eyes filled with a mixture of fear and trust. Okay. Let's go over the plan one more time, Mary said, her brow furrowed with concentration. John nodded, his gaze shifting to the child. We need to get it out of the house and somewhere safe. But where? Mary asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Those agents could be watching us. I've got an idea, John said, a glimmer of hope in his eyes. There's an old cabin in the woods. Off the grid. The woods? Mary's eyes widened. But what if they follow us? We'll have to be careful, John said, his hand reaching out to squeeze hers. But it's our best chance. The child let out a soft chirp, and John and Mary knew they had to act quickly. All right. Let's do this, Mary said, her voice filled with determination. They gathered the child and their supplies moving with a sense of urgency. Stay close to me, John whispered, his eyes scanning the area for any sign of the agents. Mary nodded, her grip on the child's hand tightening. I won't let them take it. They made their way through the streets, their hearts pounding, until they reached the edge of the woods. Wow, this is it. John said, his voice low. Let's go. They disappeared into the trees. The child's small form cradled in Mary's arms. Moments later, a group of government agents arrived at the house. Their faces etched with frustration. What? what? They've got to be around here somewhere. One of them growled, his eyes narrowing. John and Mary sat on the couch. The alien child nestled between them. We have to get it out of here, John said, his voice low and urgent. I know, Mary replied, her brow furrowed with worry. But where can we take it? The child let out a soft chirp, its large eyes pleading with them. We need to find somewhere remote, somewhere they'll never think to look. John said, his mind racing. What about that old cabin in the woods? Mary suggested, her eyes lighting up. The one off the grid? John asked, his expression brightening. Yes, Mary exclaimed, her voice filled with hope. 
It's perfect. The child seemed to sense their excitement, its body relaxing slightly. Okay. Let's start packing, John said, already rising from the couch. Mary nodded, her gaze shifting to the child. I don't worry. We're going to keep you safe. The child let out another chirp. And John and Mary knew they had to act quickly. We'll need supplies, a way to keep it hidden, John said, his mind racing with the details. I'll start gathering what we need, Mary said, her voice filled with determination. The child watched them, its large eyes filled with a mixture of fear and trust. We're going to get you somewhere safe, John said, his hand gently stroking the child's head. Yes, Mary added, her own hand reaching out to join John's. No matter what, the child let out a soft trill, and John and Mary knew they were ready to put their plan into action. John and Mary stood in their living room, their trusted friends gathered around them. Okay, everyone knows the plan, John said, his voice low and serious. We're ready, their friend Sarah replied, her eyes filled with determination. The alien child watched the group, its large eyes darting between them. Let's do this, Mary said, her hand reaching out to gently touch the child's head. The group sprang into action, quickly gathering supplies and preparing for the journey. We need to move quickly, John said, his gaze shifting to the window. Those agents could be back at any moment. Don't worry, we've got your back, their friend Mike said, a reassuring smile on his face. The child let out a soft chirp, and John couldn't help but feel a surge of protectiveness. All right, let's go, he said, his voice firm. The group made their way out of the house. The child safely tucked away in a backpack. The woods are this way, Mary said, leading the way. They moved quickly and quietly, their eyes scanning the area for any sign of the agents. We're almost there, John whispered, his heart pounding. Suddenly, a rustling in the bushes made them all freeze. Get down, Sarah hissed, her hand reaching for her weapon. Ah! They waited, their breath held, as a small animal emerged from the foliage. False alarm, Mike said, his voice tinged with relief. They continued on, their pace quickening as they neared the old cabin. There it is, John said, his voice barely above a whisper. John and Mary sat in the dimly lit living room, the weight of their decision heavy on their shoulders. What are we going to do? Mary asked, her voice barely above a whisper. John sighed, running a hand through his hair. I don't know, Mary. This is also overwhelming. The alien child, nestled in the corner, watched them with its large, expressive eyes. We can't keep it here, Mary said, her gaze shifting to the child. It's not safe. I know. John replied, his voice tinged with regret. But we can't just abandon it either. Mary reached out, her hand gently resting on John's arm. What if it's dangerous? What if it hurts us? John shook his head, his expression resolute. I don't believe that. It seems scared, just like we are. The child let out a soft chirp, and John couldn't help but feel a pang of sympathy. We have to at least try to help it, he said, his voice firm. We can't turn our backs on it. Mary nodded, her eyes filled with uncertainty. But what if we're in over our heads? Then we'll figure it out, John said, reaching out to take her hand. Together, to the child floated closer, its tiny hands reaching out towards them. I just, I'm worried, Mary said, her voice trembling. What if we're making a mistake? John squeezed her hand, his gaze steady. We'll never know unless we try. The child let out another soft trill, and John and Mary knew they had to make a decision. I guess we're in this for the long haul, Mary said, her voice tinged with uncertainty. 
I guess so, John replied, his own voice betraying his doubts. The child continued to hover, its large eyes fixed on them, and John and Mary knew they had more to discuss. The old cabin in the woods was quiet, save for the gentle hum of the generator powering the small space. John and Mary sat on the worn couch, the alien child nestled between them. We made it, Mary whispered, her hand gently stroking the child's head. It's her now, John replied, his gaze fixed on the child's glowing eyes. The child let out a soft trill, its tiny hands reaching out towards them. What do you think it's trying to tell us? Mary asked, her brow furrowed with curiosity. I'm not sure, John admitted, his hand covering the child's. But I had a feeling it's important. And suddenly the child's eyes began to glow brighter, and a strange energy crackled in the air around them. John, what's happening? Mary cried, her voice filled with alarm. I don't know. John replied, his own eyes widening with wonder. But I think we're about to find out. The child's body began to levitate, its tiny limbs outstretched, as if reaching for something unseen. This is incredible, John breathed, his gaze fixed on the child's display of power. But what does it mean? Mary asked, her voice tinged with uncertainty. The child let out a high-pitched trill and the air around them seemed to hum with energy. I think it's trying to show us something, John said, his voice low and thoughtful. Mary nodded, her own expression filled with a mixture of awe and trepidation. Do you think we can use its powers to our advantage? She asked, her eyes searching John's face. I don't know, John replied, his hand tightening around the child's. But we have to try. The child's eyes glowed brighter, and John and Mary knew they were about to embark on a journey unlike any they had ever imagined. The cabin was surrounded, the government agents closing in with their weapons drawn. Come out with your hands up, one of the agents shouted, his voice echoing through the trees. John and Mary huddled inside. The alien child cradled in Mary's arms. What are we going to do? Mary whispered, her voice trembling. I don't know, John replied, his mind racing. But we can't let them take the child. The child let out a soft chirp, its large eyes filled with fear. Shh. Mary soothed, her hand gently stroking the child's head. Suddenly, the child's eyes began to glow, and a strange energy crackled in the air around them. John, look, Mary cried, her eyes widening with wonder. John watched in awe as the child's power seemed to grow, the air around them shimmering with energy. What's happening? One of the agents shouted, his voice laced with panic. The other agents backed away, their weapons trembling in their hands. I don't know, John replied his voice barely above a whisper, but I, I think we're about to find out. The child's body began to levitate, its tiny limbs outstretched as if reaching for something unseen. Get down, one of the agents yelled, his eyes wide with fear. The agents scattered, their weapons firing wildly as the child's power continued to build. <sighs> John and Mary huddled together, shielding the child with their bodies. It's working, Mary whispered, her voice filled with awe. The agents retreated, their faces etched with confusion and fear. John and Mary watched as the child's power dissipated, the air around them growing still once more. John and Mary sat on the couch. The alien child nestled between them, safe and sound. We did it, Mary whispered, her hand gently stroking the child's head. Yes, we did, John replied, a relieved smile on his face. Ah. The child let out a soft chirp, 
its large eyes filled with a mixture of contentment and curiosity. Welcome home, John said, his voice warm and welcoming. Days turned into weeks, and the child began to settle into its new life with John and Mary. It's amazing how quickly it's adapting, Mary remarked, watching as the child played in the backyard. I know, John said, his arm around Mary's shoulders. It's like it was always meant to be here. The neighbors, once wary of the strange child, soon warmed to its presence, drawn in by its gentle nature. Look, it's making friends, Mary exclaimed, as the child interacted with the neighborhood children. John chuckled, his heart swelling with pride. I told you they'd come around. The child's powers, once a source of fear, became a source of wonder and fascination for the community. Can it really do all those things? One of the neighbors asked, her eyes wide with amazement. Yes, and more, John replied, a proud smile on his face. Mary watched as the child played, its laughter filling the air, and she knew that they had made the right decision. We're family now, she said, her voice soft and filled with love. John nodded, his hand reaching out to take hers. Yes, we are. The child looked up at them, its large eyes filled with a sense of belonging, and John and Mary knew that their lives would never be the same. 